What's up guys? Long time no see. I know we are all in quarantine inside because we are currently living through the biggest snowstorm this world has ever seen. But as for what I'm doing while I'm stuck inside, I've been watching a lot of YouTubes. And almost every time I turn on a Marquez Brownlee video, I'm always amazed by his incredible intros. I start the video, it's a review, there's always a cool shot of the product. It's usually done with a camera robot and maybe his special probe lens. And as you'll know if you've subscribed to my channel for a while, I try to emulate those kinds of shots. Obviously not exactly because I don't have a robot or a probe lens like that, but I try and do cool intro shots for my videos. But they're really DIY. A lot of times I'm really jerry-rigging things together. There's a lot of duct tape involved. But then I saw this guy on YouTube make a video where he tried to recreate MKBHD's iPhone 11 Pro review intro. And it looks great. His iPhone 11 Pro review intro, for some context, is probably one of his coolest. And it's this weird optical illusion overhead shot where it looks like you're looking straight, but you're actually looking over. And at first I was like, wow, I could never do a shot like that. But then I thought about it and I realized if there's any time to try something like this, it's now. So yeah, that's the plan. We're gonna be recreating MKBHD's finest video intros without the camera robot, without the expensive lenses, and just with my equipment. And even like in the past, sometimes I would use a slider in my intro shots, which was kind of nice to have, but I was renting that slider from my school. And now that we're not in school, I have no way to get something like that. I also don't have anyone helping me to do this, so it's gonna be tricky, but we're gonna figure it out. These are the intros that I picked. They seemed manageable while also being really cool shots that I wanted to be able to get. That includes the 16-inch MacBook Pro review, the Galaxy S20 Ultra review, and my personal favorite, the Asus ROG Phone 2 intro. So I'm very excited to get started tomorrow. All right, it's the next day. It's actually two days later because I didn't want to spend the whole day in the basement. Yesterday, it was like 80 degrees out for the first time. Had to be outside. Right now, it's like 75, so I should still probably be outside, but I am dedicated. I am going to come down here and get a video done, and it's going to be a banger. So I figured we would get started. I guess this is a bit more of a, a wide view. Um, we're going to switch over to this camera. This will be like the vlog cam and then we'll shoot the intro with this camera. Here's my plan. We're, we're going to do the 16 inch MacBook Pro intro first. I'm going to try and attach this camera to like ropes and try and like move the ropes around like the camera's a puppet and then like use my computer there. Just leave it there and then just like you know kind of go in like this and, and move the camera on ropes and then I'll probably add some stabilization in later and let's uh let's see how it goes. Okay we are back on this camera. Subtle flex there I know. Grabbing another SD card here. I feel like this is gonna be so much harder than I thought it was gonna be. Okay, here's the rope. I'm literally a vlogger again. If you watched my Moto Razor review, you'll know I use this rope for magic, but today we're gonna use it to tie to my camera. I figured we would use rope instead of string because I really don't want this to break. There you go. Ideally, I come in like this and we'll all kind of go in like that. Marquez, if you're watching this, just wanna say I'm a big fan. Hey Google, turn off the desk. Sure. Turn yeah, that's gonna place. help. I know. Another subtle flex. Oh, sh**. Ow. Literally, it's hitting the camera. Let's just try this handheld. I don't think the ropes idea was really gonna work. But I actually kind of like that. My camera just died. I mean, that's like pretty cool, right? My battery died again. You know, I was watching the Mr. Beast creativity games or whatever. It was not only just like a good charity event, but I feel like that was just like such a cool idea. Just to have all those YouTubers that are so different that would never usually collab with each other. Matt Stoney and Casey Neistat, like the most ambitious crossover of all time. So if you're looking for some entertainment, that's my recommendation. Here we go. This is giving me the shot right now. Right here, bro. Here we go. One bite, everyone knows the rules. Here we go. Okay. One of those was good. We're done. Hey, so before we move on, um, like many of the shots you'll see in this video, I had to reshoot this MacBook Pro intro, and I'm doing it a bit differently. I've set up a white backdrop here, and I've reshot it a few times, but the problem is his shot moves really slowly, and in order to do that, you kind of have to just shoot in slow motion, which I can't do because this camera only shoots in 60 frames per second at the most. It's an old camera. It looks great, but it's an old camera. It doesn't do um, high FPS slow motion, so I'm going to try shooting this shot with my phone. I mean, it's the highest slow-mo that I can get. I mean, like, this looks good. It's got potential. I mean, it's super slow. If you got rid of the flicker and you sped it up a bit in editing, this could work. I'm gonna keep trying it with my phone. I think this is honestly the best course of action at this point. Okay, time to do the next one. Next up, we're doing the Galaxy S20 Ultra review, which is debatably the hardest one. 
I think um, the only other one that could be in contention for hardest one would be maybe the one we just did. For this one, this is gonna be tricky. I think my plan is to cut it into two. So there's the initial shot of the phone on the table, and we're just gonna do that by putting the camera on the tripod, and moving the tripod in while also moving the camera at a stable rate, and then we're gonna cut it right there. And then, like, I don't know how we're gonna do this, so. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Okay, it's been a little bit of time. This is where we're at right now. So I've essentially built this little setup here. It looks really good from this camera looking through the monitor, but it doesn't look that good in real life. You can see in his setup, he's got like uh, some boxes and stuff on the side. I don't have a red box like that, so I just put a card box. We've got a little mini tripod there for his little sculpture. It's close enough. I'm gonna work on the lighting a little bit more, but overall, I mean, I think it's looking pretty solid. Smooth. Okay, so we got the first part of the shot absolutely down. Okay, but now is the hard part. So now we have to pick up the camera and move it like this and get the different angles of the phone. So this right now is identical. Start the start. Now we're gonna unscrew this and I have to do this smoothly. Camera. Okay, yeah, that, this is, this is gonna be tougher than I thought. Camera, bottom of the phone and then Flip it, and then like that. Oh my god, I ruined it. Ah, it's so not smooth, I lost it. Ah! This is not working. Maybe, okay, so the shot's gonna have to be a bit different. Okay. That was kinda cool. We might just have to cut this part out. I guess if you're seeing this, we ended up getting this, but. Okay, I think one of those worked. Calling it a day with that shot. Hey, so it's me in the future. It's been a couple days since I shot that. So um, I actually didn't end up going with that shot. The way I did it, handheld, just didn't work. So I figured out a new strategy since then. This is the new setup. You can see I'm using a different phone here. You've got the 8 Plus. You've got the camera here, and then you've got uh, some red stuff in the background. And overall, it looks pretty good. And then we've got these two lights here that were flickering. So yeah, that's like the new setup. So when you see that shot at the end of the video, you'll know that's why it looks like that. We have another shot that's actually somewhat similar, and it's of the Asus ROG Phone 2. And I'm thinking maybe since we're in this setup, why not try and get that shot done as well? It's it's the same kind of same kind of setup. You know what I mean? It's actually a little bit simpler than the other shot, which is great news. Okay, so for this intro shot, he's doing it like on white. He's got just like a table littered with, with tech stuff. And so I'm trying to make, you know, these little cool drawings here. So I'm just gonna put a bunch of like techy kind of stuff. There's a spoon, silvery kind of metallic -y, so that should work. Let's see what else I've got. It's looking pretty cool. I'm feeling good about this. Okay, it says I only have two minutes left, but something about this camera is you always have more left than it tells you, so I'm just gonna bank on that and hope for the best. Okay. Hey, it's me, and this is a new setup. I'm trying to figure out as many ways as possible to essentially frame the same exact shot in this tiny extra bedroom in my basement that I call a studio. But congratulations, you've made it to the end of the video. Welcome to what I've been teasing this entire time. It's time we watch some shots. Well, you watch some shots. I've already seen them. Now, before you see any of the shots, lower your expectations. Hoping I can promise low perform high, what is it? Buy low, sell high, no. What is it? Perform low, high, what is it? Oh, under promise, over deliver. So maybe you'll be impressed by my shots, I certainly hope so, but I'll tell you right now, they're not as good as Marquez's shots. I don't have a camera robot, I don't have the gear that he has, but this is, I think, the best that you could possibly do it without that gear. We're gonna start by watching the 16 inch MacBook Pro review intro shot. May I remind you, this one was shot with the iPhone 11 Pro. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys, MKBHD here, and this is the new 16-inch MacBook Pro. 
Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here. For starters, as you guys saw, I used two different setups. I started by using my main camera, then we switched over to my phone, and I did just use the regular slow-mo mode on my phone. I shot it in reverse, which I do all the time because it's a little bit easier than shooting it while the camera's moving forwards, and then I played that shot in reverse while editing. And there really wasn't a ton of editing to do. I color corrected it to make it look a little more like Marquez's shot. I took a screenshot of Marquez's shot, and then I cut out the PNG so that I could just have the text and insert that into my shot. So I wouldn't have to worry about finding the same font and color. Yo, I just realized I'm gonna try and like show this to Marquez like Marquez If you are watching this like oh my god, this is a dream come true That's really all I've got to say about the 16 inch MacBook Pro shot. It was really pretty simple It was by far the simplest shot and I would say it was the closest replica to Marquez's actual shot The only difference is that it's not the same computer. Otherwise, it looks nearly identical Okay, next was the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra shot. I'm not even gonna say anything here. It is All right, so I know what you're thinking. Okay, I actually don't know what you're thinking. Let me know in a poll. But I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I really liked this shot. Obviously, there are a lot of key differences between my version of this shot and Marquez's version. It looks pretty much the same, but you might be thinking, how would you make the lights flicker? You must have four hands, one for the camera, one for the light, one for the other light, one for the other light. Well, that's where the video trickery comes in. So the first flicker was actually done completely in editing. I just made the footage look darker and then I made it flicker in editing. But in reality, I was just changing the colors of the footage. I realized later I could have done that for all of it would have made the shot way easier to do but that's okay I now know for next time for the other flicker while I was holding the camera in one hand I had a switch in the other hand that was controlling my softbox that's lighting me now so I was able to flicker that one on and then as soon as I got the camera to a stop I paused the recording for a second grabbed the other light started the recording again and flickered one more time and that got me in the right position then instead of picking up the camera and trying to do it handheld I used a zoom lens and was able to just zoom in and move the camera around around fluidly. Now I know what you're thinking, that's cheating, and it doesn't look like Marquez's shot at all. Which is kind of true, it doesn't look exactly the same, but I feel like for most people it looks pretty much the same. You don't have the same dynamic angles that he has, but it's really the best I could do. As you guys saw, I tried doing it with the angles using my hands, because my arms are the closest I have to a robot, and it just didn't look good. There was no fluid way to do it. It's impossible, I just don't have steady enough hands for that. I also used my iPhone 8 Plus instead of the 11 Pro, A for a bit of variety, and B because I was on the phone with someone while I was doing this and I didn't want to hang up. So that's pretty much it for that shot. There's definitely stuff I'm not covering, but I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I color corrected as well in editing. I used LUTs, which I've done videos on before. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And then we go on to the final shot that I showed you guys, which is the Asus ROG Phone 2 shot. Check it out. Asus ROG Phone 2. Okay, so a lot went into the editing of this shot. Doing it in person actually wasn't very hard. It was the same thing as I did with the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra shot, but without the flickering of the lights, I was just moving my camera in. But there are a few things that I did to really elevate this shot. For one, I added in those two floating titles. Now you might not have even noticed them when you were watching this because you probably had your eye on the phone. One of them is this weird like basketball looking thing with a circle with a line through it and some, some lines in it. I don't know what it means. I think it was supposed to be like a graph or something. I messed it up. It does, doesn't matter. It looks close enough. Marquez had that thing floating in his shot. And then he's also got a little checklist of all of the features of the phone in his shot. So I added in a little checklist in my shot as well with the features of the iPhone 11 Pro instead of the Asus ROG phone. And then he was probably using motion tracking to make it look like it's going through the camera. But I couldn't use motion tracking because I don't want to pay $50 for a motion tracking plugin. So I used my least favorite thing ever, keyframes. If you're unfamiliar, usually when editors say they spent a painstakingly long amount of time on one second of footage or one shot, 
it's because they were using keyframes. With keyframes, you essentially click a little plus sign on every frame of a shot. And keep in mind, there's 30 frames per second, MKBHD style. So you have to do this 30 times per second. And on each frame, you move around or change whatever it is that you want to keyframe. So in this case, I was distorting and moving these two titles. So I would go through and each frame, I would move the image a little bit. I would distort it a little bit to make it look like it was going through the camera. And I spent hours on each of those, on each side of the shot, and yet it still doesn't look perfect if you look closely. Not to mention, to even make those two transparent titles, I had to download an app and then draw those with my finger on my phone, screen record it, put it on my computer, and then kind of green screen out the background. And then, and then, that wasn't it for the shot. If you look at the original shot that I shot, you can see that as I move my camera back, you can see that the stuff is just on a table. For Marquez, as soon as the camera goes, you can see stuff on the table, and it moves forward to the phone. And the way he's able to achieve this is because the camera is on a robot arm, so it can move as far forward or as far back as it wants. I believe up to nine feet, according to his video. But for me, because I'm on a tripod, the tripod stops as soon as it hits the table. It can't come any closer. So you have to kind of create the illusion of this endless table that you can go all the way back and all the way forward on. So while I can't have stuff right there that I'm just flying over to get to the phone, I can create an illusion of kind of an endless table where you're moving across the table to get to the stuff. So what I did is I keyframed at the bottom of the table and then replaced that mask with a pure white background so that it looked like it was coming in on the table. This doesn't make any sense to me in my head, but I'm hoping that with the visuals I'm showing you now, this is making sense to you. And with all of those things combined, as well as the flickering titles at the end, that was it. That's the end of that shot. It was by far the hardest one to edit. And that's it. That's all that I showed you guys. Although I'd be lying if I said I didn't try to do a fourth shot that I didn't end up including in this video. My original plan was to do those three and then to also do the Apple Watch Series 5 intro. So if you've seen that intro, it's really pretty cool. I actually thought this was going to be the easiest shot to get, but this ended up being near impossible. I tried it four times. I spent like five hours on that shot. So I started by doing it with my brother, wasn't satisfied with that shot, so I did it with him again. At this point, I wasn't satisfied, and he didn't want to keep doing this for me. So then I got my dad to do it, and we actually shot it with my dad, and I edited it, but it just didn't look good. I spent so many hours doing the other shots to get it absolutely perfect, and I probably could have gotten this shot perfect too. But you're relying on someone else to be your subject. And whether it's my brother or my dad, I can't blame them. They didn't want to stand there for hours while I filmed their wrist, and maybe even hit them in the head with the camera a few times. And you can see the final outcome doesn't look very great. And also, of course, I had to motion track the title with the watch. And well, if you know me, and if you've been listening to the rest of the video, you'll know that I don't have the $50 motion tracking plugin. So I was once again using keyframes, which looks terrible and the shot turned out horrible. And I just didn't feel comfortable using this shot in the video, but I thought I would just give you a quick glimpse into one of the other reasons this video took so long. There's literally a giant eight foot. That's the light. Oh my, did you guys hear that noise? Did you hear I was like, Duh. that was the light. That light could be gone for good. Oh no, this could be really bad. You see that light? That's the main light that I use in all my videos. Oh no, I'm like afraid to touch it. I turned it off, so it's not plugged in. Oh my God, it's so hot. That's probably just because it's a light though. Oh no. It's definitely broken. Oh my God. Do you guys see in there? Look, do you guys see that? The light is definitely broken. Very bad. I mean, it wasn't like super expensive, but that's cracked. That's the real deal. This is this is no joke, guys. I think I think that light is gone for good. I don't even really want to touch it. <sighs> okay, so that's basically it. One other thing I want to address before I go is that you may have noticed there's stuff around the studio that didn't really look like the typical tech filming stuff. Maybe some references to magic. If you guys know me at all, you'll know that kind of my side hobby, side passion, or maybe even a future career is that I do magic, I do card tricks, I do rope tricks, I do magic with all sorts of stuff. Currently, I'm performing Zoom birthday parties for kids, but I'm open to anything. If you're looking for me to perform a Zoom party for any reason, contact me and I will put together a show for you. So yeah, I've been using this studio as my kind of makeshift Zoom magic setup. I've also been doing Facebook Lives and a lot of video magic, just trying to keep the business rolling during this time when we're all stuck inside due to the snow. Okay, yeah, so that's it. You guys know I end every video other than literally all of them with a magic trick. So today we're actually gonna do it. I'll show you a little something I've been working on tomorrow. Check this out. This is a trick with just five cards. The Ace of Hearts, the King of Hearts, the Queen of Hearts, the Jack of Hearts, and the Ten of Hearts. Now you may recognize these cards. This is what you call a royal flush in poker. But as soon as you get rid of one card, well now, the hand is worth nothing. 
just a high ace, or at least it's nothing special. But there is something special about this suit that you may have never noticed. See, the King of Hearts. The King of Hearts is the only card in the deck that holds a sword, and you can see it looks like the sword is going through his head. In reality, he's just holding it up because he's getting ready to fight. Because the Queen cheated on him for the Jack, and the Ace was the one who told on him. Well, pretty soon, people catch wind of what happened in the Jack. Well, he's framed. Just like that. The Queen hears what happened with the Ace, of how the Ace was quite the title tale. So the Ace, well, he's next. Leaving just the Queen and the King. And you can probably imagine the King isn't very happy about the situation, so... The Queen is next, leaving just the King. And I'm sure you can guess what happens next. All of the cards go blank, just like that. But every good story needs a good illustration. So we can bring all of the pictures back, just like this. We just give the cards a shake, give it a blow, and all of the pictures come back. But not like they used to be. Check this out. They all come back together on one card to depict what actually happened. That is the King's Revenge. The Ten of Hearts is probably glad he wasn't involved in this drama. Check this out. If you just take the Ten of Hearts just like this, wave it over the cards, and give it a snap, blow, just like that. All of the cards go back to what they used to be, just like that. So next time you get this hand in poker, just remember the story of the Jealous King. New setup again. That's just something I've been working on and wanted to show you guys before we end the video. It's been a long one. It's been a nice one, I certainly hope. And I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to ring my like button and subscribe to my bell if you enjoyed the video. And I gotta go because it's, as Snapchat would say, past my bedtime. Good night.